Hi, welcome to Calypso Tutorials. In this first tutorial, we would like to take you on a tour to get you comfortable with the environment. We'll provide you the knowledge to be able to create and test your first project. Open your Calypso Designer and press the New button on the toolbar. First thing to do is provide the name of our project. Let's call it Tutorial 1. Although you can deploy your project into any device running Windows CE, Windows Mobile, Windows Desktop or Android, we must associate a specific device with our project. The purpose of this property is to define two things. First, the base resolution of our application. When designing your forms, they will have the dimension of the screen defined. Still, you can deploy your project into devices with different resolution and ask Calypso to adjust itself to the new size, even if smaller than the one we are defining as being the base one. Second, in order to use the keyboard to trigger actions in your project, the keys must be defined at the device level, providing to Calypso the ASCII code of each key that we want to capture. For your convenience, most of the devices listed here already have the keyboard defined. If not, you can press this button to do it so. Let's switch to the Keys tab, and for example, we can see that the Enter key is defined as ASCII 13. Although we don't need to specify any more parameters, let's take a quick review on, on some of the most important ones. Let's start with Project Version and Database Version. These parameters are meaningless to Calypso, but they can be very helpful to you. You should use them to identify the version of your project and database, and we have access to these in runtime. Use them to make version logs or even to check if the current version is up to date. If you want to customize your application's icon, press the K logo and then choose the file. A file picker comes up and we should choose an ICO file 32 by 32. When done, just press open. Since I'm leaving the default icon, I'm going to cancel. In this tutorial, we will not discuss any voice-related parameter, so let's leave these two unchecked. Let's move to the Others tab, so we can check a couple of optional parameters. Like I've said before, we can set our project to automatically adjust to the device resolution. We can choose from Default, where Calypso will adjust if it's an Android device, but not if it's a Windows one. This option is useful if you need to deploy to Windows Mobile, Android and Desktop. 90% of Windows Mobile devices are 240-320, which is our base resolution, so no problem there. On Android, it adjusts, so there's no problem there. In Windows Desktop, you don't want your 240-320 forms to resize to a 1024-768 resolution or higher. Then we have device-dependent pixels, where Calypso will adjust if it's an Android device and will ask the operative system to make adjustments to the new size if necessary. No resize option to always run in the same resolution. An automatic resize, where Calypso will adjust the application size to the device resolution, regardless of the OS. So, all we have to do now is to press the Save button and define where we want to save our project. A best and recommended practice is to create a unique folder per project, since Calypso will store all the files related with your project in it. I'm going to call it Tutorial 1, open it, and it's also useful to know that you can back up the entire folder with a guarantee that everything you need is there. I'm going to press save and wait for Calypso to create and open our project. Here it is. At left, we can see a tree with our project, and here we can see the objects that we can create. Let's press the Form button to create our first form. Notice that, since this is our first form, Calypso automatically sets it as the first form. 
Let's give it a name and a title. I'm going to call it main and I'm going to give it the title main. By default, Calypso creates maximized forms. If you want, you can create either full screen forms or specify the exact dimensions of it. I'm going to create a maximized one and press save. In the same bar where we've created our form, we can now see a list of objects that we can add to our form. Let's drag the button control onto the form. When dropping it, a properties window is open and we'll change the name of the control to button exit and set its label to exit. Let's press save and the control is created. We can now move it around using the mouse or by pressing the arrows in the keyboard. It's also possible to resize it using the mouse holding a resizing handle or by pressing the arrows in the keyboard holding the shift key. Let's adjust its size and position. And now we want to close the form when the user clicks on this control. To do it so, we go to its properties by double-clicking it, pressing F3 or the control icon in the toolbar. Here we see to switch to Actions tab. We can now see all the events that can be triggered and captured for a button control. At left, there's a list of actions from where we can choose what to execute. These actions are divided into groups and subgroups. The one we are looking for is Close Form, so it should be under the Forms group and subgroup. All we have to do now is drag and drop it into the click event, and we can see a properties window popping up. We don't need to input any action parameters, so let's just click Save or press Enter. An alternative to this method would be just typing the word Close. As you can see, Calypso automatically places the cursor in this combo box and lists all the actions starting with close and then the ones who have close on their name. We can just select the one that we want. The same property whose window comes up. We press save and the new action is created right after the one that was selected. This alternative method is useful to search for actions as their name tries to be as intuitive as possible. Since we've added an extra close form, let's remove it by right-clicking and choosing Delete. Or, as the shortcut indicates, by pressing the Delete key. Finally, we press the Save button or Enter. It's now time to test the application. Since Calypso has a built-in simulator, there's no need to use an external device. To test the project, we can either press the F10 key or hit the test button in the toolbar. In the window that comes up, press the test button. Calypso is now automatically saving the project and deploying it to the simulator. And here's your first Calypso application running. If we press the exit button, the application should close and we're back to the designer. Although your application can be tested on a simulator, you're also able to test it in a USB attached device. If it is a Windows Mobile or Windows CE device, you will need to install Windows Mobile Device Center. In case of Android, you can install PDANet, which is provided with Calypso and can be found under the Android folder where the designer is. Let me open the file location of Calypso Designer. Android folder, and here it is, PDA.net. Going back to our designer. Having that step completed, click the arrow on the right of one PDA button in the toolbar and choose between Windows or Android. If the icon of the button already displays a target platform, you can press Ctrl F10. I'm going to start by deploying to a Windows mobile device. In the window that comes up, we can define the folder where Calypso Framework should be installed. 
I'll leave it as it is and just press the next button. I'm going to open my PDA screen so you can see it. And here comes the application. So now if we press the exit button, it should work just like on the simulator. Now, to do it in Android, we're going to, we're going to repeat the process. I'm going to press OK. Exit here. Open the one for Android. It's connecting. Here it comes. Press the arrow on the side of on to PDA here in the toolbar. Select Android and press next. Calypso is repeating the steps but now for Android and here comes the application which if we press exit should close it. Congratulations, you've concluded the tutorial on how to create your first Calypso application. See you on the next one.